So there's another... Now, the students, you've got to apply for as many of these places as you can because it does become like a numbers game. You know, give yourself as many options as possible. Um, you get students who get obsessed with, oh, I need to go to Lambda, or, and they only apply to this one place, and then they don't get in, and maybe they were a better student than, um, than everyone else you're working with, but they didn't give themselves a, a chance. Um, so this thing about, you know, don't get fixated on one school. Just pick, you know, as many as you can, maybe six, ten, whatever, as many as you can afford, and start doing it. Because also it's practice. By going and doing those auditions, you get into the, the thing of it. You get into the, the swing of it. Um, and also, don't let it define you. Because the goal is to have a career afterwards, you know. Let, let your jobs define you afterwards. I mean, who cares about what drama school an actor went to? You, just, you care about if they were in something good. You saw them give a great performance. It's, so that's a kind of a mind thing that people get into, which I try and chase out. Um, the other thing is, you know, the panel are hoping you're going to be good. And your job is not to make excuses, but your job is to offer your wares. Um, you know, you're there to offer to help them, if you like, to see if you can fix their problems. I mean, one of the little catchphrases is, you know, you're like a, a trainee dentist. You've just qualified and you're with your first patient and it's a little kid. Now, there's no point saying to that little kid, Listen, I've only just qualified and I, I might mess this up, so bear with me. Your job is to shut your mouth about those things and just um, put them at ease. Now, you get to the audition. Now, if the audition's in the morning and you might have had to travel to London or somewhere, you might not have spoken to anyone that morning. So you've got to start doing your exercises just to warm up your voice. You know, also, I would say to people, you know, get there good and early, you know, 45 minutes early, if you can, just so you know exactly where the door of the place is. And then find some side street, some little park where you can have a wander, a sit. And maybe whisper through your speeches, but don't start doing them and doing them. You know, by the time you're at the audition, you should know what you're talking about. But what you do need to practice is just getting the voice moving again, getting the body moving again. So doing, maybe having a run first thing, before your breakfast um, and then doing some stretches and all this because once you're into that room you will tighten up also you know then while you're with the um, while you're waiting to go in or rather as you first arrive maybe check out where the toilets are because suddenly you're sat in some weird corridor and you might not feel like asking but if you know straight away where the facilities are or and also water. Water's the main thing. I should have said this during the class ones. Always lots of water because you're going to be using lots of breath and you'll dry out. So you need the, the water. Okay, so... Now, they'll in general just say, okay, what would you like to start with? They might not ask you what you're going to do. But they might ask you what you're going to do. Um, but what I'll have done in a class is we'll have discussed which speech to start with. And there'll be a strategy for, for that. I mean, in one way you could say, well, you start with your best one. But often you're working with people where both speeches are really good. I mean, it's not a case of which one's best. But it's almost like... Um, I don't know, there'll be different reasons as to why I suggest starting with something. Often, I'll suggest the thing that's quite technically difficult, in that um, the panel has some awareness that that was a tricky thing to have done. Sometimes if an actor is doing so well, they do a speech really well, the panel might think, 
well, that was easy for them, that speech. So, I don't know, there is a strategy on arranging um, the order in which you introduce things. I mean, often I'll, often I'll encourage the, uh, no, that's not true really. I mean, I was going to say I encourage the classical one first, but um, it depends. Sometimes if I'm working with a student who's, again, doesn't speak English so well, it's difficult to understand, it's quite good to do the modern one just because it tunes the panel into your voice with easier dialogue than the classical. But going through the auditions, I, I will work with students a little bit on how that process is. And our last couple of classes before their audition, we'll do them like auditions, whereby I won't really speak to them, I'll just say next sort of thing. And just get tuned into that process of um, you just getting ready to deliver the things. Now there's a couple of the bits and pieces which are sort of stagecraft type of things. It's to do with letting us know you've finished. So at the end of your speech, sometimes the actor wants to leave it dramatic as if they're gonna, they're expecting an applause. But you're not gonna get applause anyway. Um, but it's polite to let people know you're done. Because generally the audition panel are quite sympathetic and they're being kind. So, you know, repay the courtesy. So you might have finished your last line and just you know, step away from it or just a little nod, a little, not a bow, but you know, just a little acknowledgement. Take the breath, take a step, make it clear that you're done. Because all, otherwise, People are just waiting, embarrassed. You see it a lot in shows these days. You don't know the show's finished. The audience don't know if to applaud or not. You get the cast coming back on to take their bows and we're all, we don't even know you've finished. You know, it's just really bad storytelling. It's people who, you wouldn't do that if you cared about the people you were talking to. You know. Um, it, it's, you know, if you think what you're doing is no good, you can add these tricks. The one they do in France all the time is they start shows by having an actor just lying about on stage doing nothing while the audience is checking their phones. It's just moronic. You know, Chekhov or Shakespeare or Tennessee wanted that. I'm sure they would have written it into their stage directions. Um, but again, if you feel that what you're doing is rubbish, then you can try and add these tricks. But what we're trying to do is have no tricks at all. You're simply, with a beginning, middle and end choice of actions, telling a story. 